Hello, my name is Gail Joe. I'm a data and AI solution architect at Microsoft. In this video, I'll show you how to use SQL Server BCP to export data and then upload the data into Azure Storage. I'll be using the PowerShell scripts from the published GitHub repository. And I will show you how to get to this repository, which modules to run, and how to run the PowerShell scripts. In your browser, if you type get up Azure Synapse scripts and accelerators in one word, you get a list of links. This uh, our repository usually shows up on top. So this is our GitHub repository name. This is a full name. So you click this, you get to our repository. You can download the code to your laptop and use the code from your laptop. The modules we use to do the SQL Server to Synapse migration are in this folder, Migration and SQL Server. These are the PowerShell modules developed to help you to carry out the task of the entire process. This is the entire process using BCP export. You can use this module one translate DDL to translate tables and then use the module five to run SQL files in Synapse. Your tables will be migrated. This is done in a separate video. I encourage you to watch that if you haven't done so for table migration. Today, we're going to run the module two export source data with BCP. This will export the SQL Server data into a local storage in a file format CSV or .txt, your choice. When the data is uh, exported, you can use another module. Module 3, load data into Azure Storage, is a one PowerShell script. You run, all of your data will be uploaded to a, a specified location in your Azure Storage account. By the way, you can use other methods listed here. You can use Azure Data Explorer, which has a drag and drop feature. Very nice. You can drop your entire folder to your Azure Storage, especially if you are just uh, working on a smaller data files. You can use easy copy. You can program it, use this command to move uh, folders or files into Azure Storage. For large volumes data, you can use Azure Data Box Gateway to move the data to Azure Storage. You can also use the option D here, program um, the tables, the data migration, use the copy modules in Azure Data Factory. So you can choose any of the method to upload data to Azure Storage. Today, I'm going to just introduce one PowerShell script, uh, which is just the config and run. OK, so these are the modules here. And uh, I have downloaded this in my local directory. By the way, each folder have some utilities, help you to mainly generate config files so you don't have to manually configure any configuration files. So I have downloaded all the modules here in my local directory. This is exactly the structure as what you have here, OK? So let me minimize this. Let's work on this. 
So we're going to use the module two to export data. The module two has one PowerShell script, export source data.ps1. This is a PowerShell script you need to run. This takes two configuration file. One is export tables.csv. The other one is only one of these, a JSON file. See, so let me just open this JSON file quickly. So this is your server name, the SQL server name, fully qualified name. Server type is uh, always SQL. Integrated security, if it's no, you will need to provide the credentials for this SQL server. If it's yes, PowerShell will not ask for credentials, assuming you have integrated security. Output folder. This is specify where you want to put data. My configuration file say I have the Magrit master, I have output folder for the module 2. Output file format, CSV. Also, this is very important, your BCP location. There's a bcp.exe file comes with your Microsoft SQL Server. For me, I have a local SQL Server. This is where the bcp.exe located. Find your bcp.exe. So this is the configuration file. By the way, let me see my output. This is output folder I designed to store this. Let me delete this one. This is some old file, so that is empty. You don't have to delete it. If you have old one, you run again or overwrite the old content. That modules would still work. Now let's get back to here. Now let's open this uh, export tables config CSV file. Okay, so this one has a few columns. The active is one or zero. If you make this zero, PowerShell will script uh, skip this row. For the ones, PowerShell will export each table. This gives you option. If you already get a table exported, you can make it zero and uh, export the rest. In fact, you can make it all of these zero just trying to run the script. And later you can make it to all one. Okay, so I'm going to migrate all of the tables. This is my database name. This is the SQL Server database name, uh, schema name, table name, encoding. And the use query say, hey, use the query I provide. So if it's one, I'm going to use the query here. Is uh, this is also generated? I am going to show you how to generate this file. Your row delimiter, column delimiter, and a few useful, useful things. I'll explain this in a utility I'm using to generate this. Okay, so the utilities. We have a SQL script help you to generate that CSV file. I have it open here. So if I uncomment this, this is the script that we published on GitHub in the utility directory. You run this, this will generate this. You just copy this with headers, put into your CSV config file. That's it. If you want to create um, config for all of the tables, you just uh, comment this one out. So this will generate the config file contain all of the tables. Now let me show you how to set this parameter. See this encoding, all of this is configured here. So here, uh, this is what I use for row delimiter and column delimiter. And you can configure this anything you want, okay? 
So to give you another example, so the rest configuration is already documented here. So this is already generated. I'm using that file. And I'm going to run this script now. So I'm going to run a PowerShell script using PowerShell ISE. This comes uh, with your window. So I'm going to run this uh, module 2. All you need to do is hit this run button, run script. So first it's going to say, I'm looking for some configuration files. Are they in this directory? Yes, for me, this is a directory. I store my config files. So I say yes. And is this the file name? Yes, it is. And for this uh, SQL BCP, I'm going to provide my own bcp.json. OK, so this is uh, showing the result. The green one is actually the BCP command, the PowerShell script generated for you. All of the purple lines are informational. And this says, check your output in this migrate master output uh, to export source data with BCP. Now you can see this uh, data is exported here. This is my database name. This is my schema name, underscore, underscore table name. This generates all of the database tables uh, with the folder name, schema underscore table name. If you click here, this is the data file for that DBO DM account table. And this is another one, just one file. So you're done with export. Now I need to load this uh, data into Azure Storage. Load this one. I need to run another module, which is uh, module 3. Load data into Azure Storage. There is a lot of configuration files here. Um, you actually only need one. You don't need so many, OK? This is because I've done work for many other tasks. Let me open this one. So the config file is asking, where do you have easy copy? So you need to download easy copy, uh, put in a directory, your choice, and just provide directory name. You provide Azure subscription ID here and your resource group name, storage account. Um, normally, you should just choose this if you own the account. Uh, what this does, our PowerShell script will use your credential to generate a SES key, shared access secret key. And then you can specify how many hours that key should be valid. If you don't own an account, the account owner may give you a key. If the account owner give you a key, you can see no, but then you just uh, get your key here, insert your actual key here. In that way, PowerShell script will use the access key and you don't need to log in. If your keys are valid, and this should work. So next thing I'm going to ask is that uh, container name. Where do you want me to upload the file to? This is container name. Next one is your folder to upload. This one, for me, I only need to upload one folder today. If you want, if you need to upload additional folders, you give a comma here. You say, hey, I need to load another table, so another folder. So you can do that. 
for us today, I only have one folder to upload. I'm going to use my own config, which has my own uh, Azure Data Lake configuration and uh, subscription ID, etc. Now I need to run this uh, PowerShell module, load data into Azure Storage.ps1. So first, let me clear the board. Get rid of this and open the file of module three. So as before, you just hit the run button. This one is asking for a config file name. I'm loading, I'm going to use my own upload config goz.json. So this one, in my config file, I asked PowerShell script to generate the key for me. So it's asking me to be authenticated to my account. I'm going to move this away and get authenticated. I need to open my authenticator on my phone and choose the right number. All right. So that step is complete. Now it says uh, successfully generated the SAS key. It took 61 milliseconds and it's uploading the file. Okay, it's done. It give, give you some summary, also tell you how long it took. When you are uploading a large amount of uh, data, this will be very helpful information for you to measure how long I load the data. Okay, this took one minute, one minute and 25 seconds. So now let's check, see if uh, it's uploaded. So my B, this is the container BCP export. Okay, this is uh, uploaded here. This is the same file structure we have on my local storage. With that, you have watch the steps to accomplish the data migration from SQL Server to 